Okay, so I think I think we're live. Um, I just wanted to say hello and welcome everyone to our next 2013 Google Hangout. Thank you so much to our amazing panel here on screen. I think we're we're waiting for a couple people to join us, um, but I just wanted to say hello to our panel. Hi, panel, um, and a big hello to everyone who's tuning in live. My name is Nicole Dowd, and I'll be moderating, moderating today's conversation. Um, I'm a Corcoran alum from the Exhibition Design Department, and I'm currently working in graduate admissions. So we just want to go through really quick and have everyone who's joining us today on the panel introduce themselves. Um, I guess we can start from bottom left. Who's left? <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, well, we can go in order then, I guess, uh, so we can start with Jonathan. That's me. That's you. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm, uh, my name is Jonathan Healy. I'm a professor with the Interior Design and Exhibition Design Graduate Programs um, at Corcoran. Um, and uh, among other responsibilities, uh, I'm the lead instructor for the Graduate Interior Design thesis program, and so we've got uh, 21 students uh, participating in next this year, uh, 21 giant posters going in the North Atrium, and 21 fantastic presentations scheduled for uh, May 6th and May 7th uh, right in the museum atrium. That's me. Thank you. Um, so can we go to, is Lita here? Hi. Hello. Lita. Um, I am um, my name is Lita Ledesma, and I am a graduating senior in the Graphic Design BFA program here at the Corcoran. Um, my thesis exhibition is called Best Quality Art Company, and it's a tribute and kind of an examination and parody of uh, mid-century branding um, as relates to comic books and back of the comic book ads. That's it. Short and sweet. Okay, so should we go to Mazin? Hey guys, Mazin Abdulhamid here. Um, I'm a fine arts senior. Um, my piece at Next is called Meow Magazine Covers 1 through 4. Uh, it exists as a fictitious magazine in an imaginary world. Um, and it's really about the media we absorb from you know, or the information we absorb from the media, excuse me, uh, through the internet, through television, and really questioning that credibility. Um, it's in, done in the internet aesthetic, uh, featured in Gallery 16, I believe. And yeah. All right, cool. Um, move on to um, Whitney. Hi, I'm Whitney Leeming. Um I'm a Master's of New Media Photojournalism student, graduating in a couple weeks. My thesis was on the Waldo Canyon fire that happened out in Colorado Springs over the summer. Um, I did a multimedia project that kind of goes through the story and uh, is housed on a project-driven website. Is that it? Thanks, Whitney. And then we have um, Dandan. Hi, everybody. My name is Dandan. Um, Fine art major, graduating in May too, and my thesis work is one. It's a painting, six feet by six feet. The name of it is Happiness is Invisible. It's oil and acrylic on, on canvas. Uh, it deals with the uh, complexity and subtlety of, in, of interpersonal relationship, and um, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Great. Cool. So, since we have mostly students and we have Jonathan with us, um, while we wait for Joe Hale, who's the director of college exhib exhibitions, and Maria Habib, who is the senior director of design and also worked on the next exhibit, um, then I might ask some questions more directed to the the student and the academic experience. I know we were kind of chatting briefly before, um, so. I just want to put this out there, like, I guess to, maybe we'll, we can start with Mazin. Um, <clears throat> do you have, like, a favorite, a favorite story from this year's next show? Like, what has been kind of the, the, most, the most awesome, cool, difficult thing that you've had to deal with as far as next this year? Well, 
As far as stories go, I would say uh, I had invited my brother to come out and see the show, and um, the best part for me was taking him around. Um, him and his girlfriend were there, and I got to take them around and show them my community, the Corcoran community, and uh, basically just show them what art was like, what I was doing. Um, not that they're unfamiliar with art, but, you know, they're not... They're, I guess, the general public, not really fully based within the art community and just watching their reaction and they seem to enjoy it a lot and that was a lot of fun for me just showing them around all the galleries introducing them to everyone it was great so uh, but, so Whitney you guys just um, put your show up and you just presented this weekend correct yes um, so I guess can you talk a little bit about about that experience um, and like where and where your work is in in next. Sure, we um, we've spent the past couple of weeks and months uh, held up in the lab up in Georgetown, finishing our multimedia presentations, which we presented on Saturday and Sunday over the weekend. Um, it was extremely nerve wracking. I've never had to present work like that before, um, and we had a lot of uh, professionals come and view the work and critique us. So it was a great experience, um, and now. The work is down in the main floor, um, and there's single photographs as well as two touch screens where you can view um, people's projects. Yeah, so Next is kind of it's a very like unique experience for all the students, um, and I guess everyone has to present and, and have a critique, not necessarily like in the auditorium, but um, does any of the any of the VFA students want to talk about their kind of critique experience and their presentation experience as part of NEXT? Um, I guess I'll talk about it. Um, my critique, you know, is like any other critique. Um, you know, you stand up there, defend your piece, explain it to everybody, um, and just really talk, what it was, talk about what it's about. Um, for my piece, I felt like it was a visually successful piece. Um, the visuals were fine, you know, the feedback that I got from other people. Um, the fact that my piece was a, a more of an interactive piece beyond the posters, kind of, I guess, somewhat, not really too problematic, but just, you know, the history of QR codes or lack thereof, um, and just uh, the success rate of a QR code that led the viewer from my piece to the website about my piece which completed the piece, but uh, other than that, um, I think what I, what I can take from all the feedback is just finding another delivery system to show the actual meat and the content of my work to the viewer. Oh, okay, so we, got, we have Maria Habib, who's just joined us. Hi, Maria. Oh hey. I think you might be on you might be on mute. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, sorry for the delay, everybody. No, no. Hi. So welcome to our hangout. Um if you want to just take a minute and introduce yourself and I guess talk about a little bit about your involvement in Next this year. We were just talking about the student experience, um, and you've worked pretty closely with the students. Yeah, um, I am, so my name is Maria Habib, I am Senior Director of Design at the Corcoran, and I am the uh, instructor for Design Lab, and I don't know if you all might be familiar with Design Lab, but Design Lab is a group of select uh, students who work on the design and collateral for the identity for Next, um, so that includes signage that you see throughout the show, um, outside the building, advertisements, the invitation to the events, uh, all, all of the material associated with the show every year. Um, so my relationship to the students in Next is through Design Lab, so the designers working on the show, which includes a couple of Design Lab managers who are seniors who participate in the actual exhibition itself. Um, yeah, and it's really fun every year and challenging every year because they, the team has to come up with something new and exciting and um, work with real 
challenges in, in terms of resources that um, the Corcoran has, so they have to be really creative and resourceful and different every year. So it's it, that's really my relationship to Next, and it's pretty fun. <laughs> Can you talk um, maybe a little bit about the, I guess quickly, because it is like a whole semester of work that goes into us, but the development of, of the branding for next, mm -hmm. for this particular year, and I guess the, like, I'd love to have like the students weigh in on, on their perspective on this year's branding as well. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the way the process works is, I mean, throughout, in the beginning of the year, we go through a rigorous research and analysis phase where the students have meetings with our stakeholders or clients throughout the institution. So, for example, marketing communications, college exhibitions, um, the director's office, and other stakeholders. But they essentially receive direction from um, or in terms of messaging and, and marketing from the communications and marketing departments and we do a whole identity and positioning process which outlines what the the language is going to be for that year <clears throat> and also receive feedback from the previous year coming from students and really gaining kind of an understanding of what the meaning of next is to students this year um, and then really thinking about um, various solutions for uh, for how we could present next and then ultimately they present two to three or maybe even more directions to the stakeholder team and then a um, you know solicit their feedback and then we choose ultimately the best direction for that year and then come up with a production plan for it and this year um, the concept was we titled it multifacets and it really reflects um, the representation of our Corcoran community the, the the kind of language that we focused on this year in terms of messaging was um, the, the the Corcoran community as a to anything related to our location or our, our beautiful architecture or the place where we are but more in the the dialogue between the the various kind of aspects of our community and our the different mediums we work in and the diversity and so this this kind of paper craft where it started with was this paper craft three-dimensional multifaceted versions of the the um, the Corcoran brand typeface which is Gotham and then from that um, we developed signage and kind of larger pieces that then uh, reflected this idea of this multifaceted Corcoran and who, you know, the diverse community that the students are. Awesome. Thanks, Maria. Mm -hmm. I guess from a student perspective, um, I don't know, uh, Lita, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how your project in graphic design relates to this idea, this multifaceted idea, um, and, and talk a little bit about your process and putting your work up at Next? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, um, I uh, participated in Design Lab the year before as a junior, so Yay. I really, uh, I really appreciate the work that they did this year even more because I'm I'm familiar with with how much work goes into it, and um, I'm very impressed with the way that this particular identity design um, kind of relates to everything, um, and it really looks good next to Gabriel Milan's. Sculpture, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I mean, the, my particular project, as I, I mentioned a little earlier, is um, it's a, pro a project that kind of riffs on a certain kind of branding um, in a certain context. It's mid-century. It's uh, back of the comic book ad kind of thing, and it's kitschy and it's campy. And so it was something that it was meant to have have fun with it. And it's an interactive piece. Um, there's a takeaway element. Um, for the installation, I think the biggest challenge that I faced and, and continue to face is is just managing the giveaway item. Um, I made enough to kind of blast through the whole exhibition, and I continually come back to restock it. Um, and it's just been really fun to to watch people interact with it and uh, kind of puzzle over it. And um, so, yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, I think this this the, the next exhibition um, design 
uh, just looks really good in the gallery space as well. And I, I think that's always a challenge when you're designing an exhibition brand is just having it be its own thing in its own way while giving room for the other artwork. And I think they did a really good job this year. Yeah, that balance between really speaking to or saying, you know, this is next, but then also being a little bit in the background to the actual work that's being presented in next. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So I just want to talk a little bit, I guess, on, on, the, on the graduate perspective as well. Um, I know, I guess this question is for Jonathan especially, um, how how the process with the design students works. Um, you know, you have this very three-dimensional idea and, and something that is not necessarily directly understood as being a fine art. Um, so I know you're, you're kind of in the middle of all of this right now, Jonathan, but if you want to give uh, your perspective on like what's going on with the interior designers and the exhibition designers to a certain extent. Oh boy. Um, you're right, it is a big challenge. Um, the, the kind of product that designers um, spatial designers make is not um, it's not something that hangs on walls very well. Um, sometimes it, it is the walls. Um, I guess what, what we produce in interior design and exhibition design is sort of di also distinct in that the final artifacts of what the students make are representations of the next step um, and the full realization of their art or of their piece is the built environment. Um, and so we stop a little short on that um, due to time and resources. Um, but we take advantage of the next platform. Um, uh, we do create a kind of poster type installation to um, articulate the, the scope of the theses, um, the issues the students identified in their process, um, the kinds of products that they end up displaying sort of fixed on the walls ends up being really unusual and that it, it's really their process stuff. The install is really, it's today. Um, that means they submitted their, their work um, a week or two ago and they still have more time left in the semester to, to resolve their issues. Um, so um, it's very brave of them but they're, they're showing a lot of the process work which is a really kind of vulnerable draft state of ideas. So I give them a lot of compliments um, for for embracing the opportunity. The other thing that we do, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have uh, we have an invited jury that comes Monday and Tuesday of next week, um, and each individual student will present for an extended amount of time. They'll introduce their work, um, which will be communicated by uh, a series of drawings and models, um, a lot of drawings and models, I should say, and um, a discussion ensues. Um, which is probably very similar to the, the, the BFA critiques um, uh, that, that the undergraduates, undergraduates experience. Um, I, I think one of the ways that it does relate though is um, as, as we heard at the beginning from uh, Mazin, it's, it's a great opportunity to introduce the indiv each individual student and the discipline um, to the broader community. Um, to provide some context of their experience. One of the things um, I'm sure my students would agree with is it's a great opportunity to bring their, <laughs> their loved ones that they haven't seen very much of in the past few weeks and months, um, uh, friends, potential future colleagues, to come and understand a little bit more um, both their work and the rigor of their work and, and where the work comes from. And I think that adds a lot, a lot of credibility and value um, so that's on the ID side. I would really love to hear from Whitney's perspective, um, especially considering the new media. This was your first time with such a with this type of experience. It was also the first time that new media rolled out a, a way to engage thesis in this. It writes a new program, is it not? It is the first time. Um, we're the first graduating class, so we've... You're a trailblazer. <laughs> yeah, we're learning all the kinks and getting those taken care of, but um, it was a great learning experience um, all the way through. I kind of feel like we weren't um, terribly involved in the whole next process until really recently, and getting to see it and see everyone's work up was just absolutely amazing. 
It was a fabulous event. I was able to catch part of it um, over the weekend, the actual presentations. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely stellar. Um, so, uh, compliments. Yeah, so um, I think maybe we talk about these critique process um, and it is very, it's different for the, for the BFA students. Am I correct in that? And that it happens like in the gallery. Um, do you have a jury? And anyone can kind of jump in on this. Anyone who's done one of the, the critique for the BFA st uh, students. Someone want to jump in on that? Um, well, what do you mean by jury? Uh, I think. So I, think, I guess who are you? Like where where are you presenting? Who are you presenting to? Like is it? Yeah. I think. Well, from my personal experience in the in the fine art realm um, at the Corcoran, I feel like we were really presenting to ourselves and um, and to our our fine art class community as well as you know the viewers of Next and the rest of the school, of course, but. Uh, I guess we were, it was really more of a personal sharing and, you know, showing our development off to our classmates and just, you know, watching watching us grow together over the past four years. And, um, Next was really just bringing that together in the end. Yeah, and, and we have our critique in the gallery with the our classmates and teachers, but I also was able to participate in the um, gallery talk, and then I talked to the docents. Those are broader um, audience for me. It's a very good opportunity for me to talk about my work publicly, and and people ask questions, and it helped me to articulate my own uh, thoughts and uh, to. We explain the process of my work to a broader audience. I thought it was great. The um, I think the graphic design just quickly. Uh, the graphic design program is is approaching it a little differently, so we may not get critiques in the gallery. It depends on the schedule, but. Uh, um, generally, we do so many critiques during the semester. Um, um, so, mm -hmm. can you think about closer this? Uh, this is last year's lessons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I was distracted by that. I thought someone was speaking. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, anyway, uh, graphic design doesn't really approach it that way, and I'm not sure that we will. It's just very strange for us to exhibit in a gallery anyway because I think it's echoing what uh, you were saying earlier about the interior design. We're not generally designing for that um, environment. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff we're doing is print and web and um, it's a different anticipation. So that's It, it, it's certainly, a, a, to jump on that, it's certainly a unique um, experience. The graphic design, of course, is another one of these um, disciplines that the your, um, sometimes it gravitates to functional objects. It's not necessarily things that are destined to live in a museum. Maybe they find their way to a museum after everybody's bought a billion iPods. Um, but one of the interesting things Corcoran's doing is juxtaposing that kind of work with the fine arts and putting into a, a new context. Um, and, um, you know, it's kind of curious that the exhibition design program and the interior design programs and new media photojournalism all have installs in that atrium space. It's, it's one of the first things visitors will run into before they would go into the, um, um, uh, the collection, the permanent collection, especially the collection downstairs. You know, you confront um, a series of... Uh, sort of experimental, speculative, interpretive designs or designs for interpretive exhibitions um, and then you walk through the thresh threshold and you're staring at a, um, uh, a portrait of George Washington. Um, there's some all kinds of uh, interesting constructed and accidental conversations that can come about from there. Well, I, I really like what Maria was saying about uh, the multifaceted 
I guess, aura of Next this year, and um, with, you know, being in graphic design, Lita, um, I, I thought it was great to have this one, you know, clear slate, this plane where all these different mediums and, uh, you know, parts of art and design, and they can all exist on the same plane and, you know, exhibit in the gallery, and I thought, you know, I thought that was great, that, uh, and it was really, each gallery you went into, it was a, a different, you know, very eclectic, and everyone got to show, a, a different medium was being shown throughout each gallery, and I, I really thought that stood out a lot at Next. Uh, I wanted to add also, um, part of, just to kind of go with what you were just saying and the multifaceted aspect of Next, it's and it's not just about kind of what's exhibited in Next or what is showing in Next, it's also about how great it is for all of the students to kind of work together to get this, this show and series of events up um, for the length of time that it is, that's inclu all inclusive of everybody's work. Um, and so, for example, the Design Lab students also worked with, we forgot to mention, um, Exhibition Design Fellows um, managed by Joe Hale and the, the college exhibitions team to really take in, you know, what all of the students were coming up with in our spaces and work on the, the layout of the show. So everything is purely done as a collaboration between all of us and what we, you know, what we do and what we're trying to achieve every year. So it's really fun and exciting in that regard as well. And Joe Hale, I see, is here now, so he can talk about that a little bit further. Yeah, so that was good, good timing, Joe. Um, but I'm not sure that... He has a mic, um, so we might have Oops. to come. We might have to come back to him. Okay. <laughs> but I'd be happy to inhabit Joe and speak the transcript that he's. <laughs> I can do a pretty good Joe impression, especially now that he cut his hair so short. <laughs> well, so I we sh maybe we should talk about that process uh, of of going through and. I mean, the Corcoran Gallery is kind of a massive space, especially, I mean, it's, it's such a, a wonderful opportunity for students to be able to exhibit in a museum environment. Um, and so this would be a great question for Joe, but we can also ask the students, you know, on your involvement on actually physically hanging your work and where, where, it, it, where it's placed in the gallery and the arrangement and how much input you had. And, um, I don't know, who wants to start? <laughs> Um, I can talk really quickly. Um, I, I didn't have any input in the location and I was fine with that because I, I had never exhibited my work in a gallery before so I was really happy to defer to the experts there and I knew that they were going to figure out something that made sense. My work is in the atrium. Um, it's, uh, it's in a really light, really nice, I like the spot that it's in. Um, it's not a very large exhibition, um, but it seems to um, be in this place where a lot of people were attracted to it, so that worked for me. Um, I, I stopped by on opening day when it was first open to the public and I kind of spied on people just to see if the interactive element was really working for them. And I was really happy because I saw people whip out their iPhones and go to the website because it was uh, listed on the poster and, you know, say, hey, this is a real website, it's real, it's really real, and that was kind of fun. Um, so it was a really good experience, even, even with all the foibles of uh, the people who snuck in and got the sneak preview of the giveaway. <laughs> well, I would say I was a little uh, hesitant about the placement of the work, um, just because, you know, overall it was good that all, all the majors and all the aspects were shown in the galleries, and the fact that it was eclectic in the what? end was great. But um, I think I uh, just yeah. sorry. I keep hearing something. Uh, um, but yeah. So just you know, I was a little bit hesitant because um, everyone was you know there was this talking like oh I wonder where my piece is gonna go. I think it's gonna be best here, and I think it's gonna be best there. So I think everyone was just you know biting their nails and like hoping their piece would be showcased you know to the best that it could be and I think in the end that turned out great. Um, I'm very happy where with where I was ended up um, 
But like Lita was saying, you know, people were pulling out their phones to look at her website. Uh, sadly, I didn't have the uh, the same the same outcome with my site through my pieces. But you know, that's it's another story. And when I created my work, that I know that I um, I want people to look at it from a, from afar. Also, I want people to be able to. Uh, really have a really close close up look at my painting. So I um, conveyed this idea to Joe Hale and and my teachers, and then and they moved my painting around several times, but finally got a good home for it. I was really happy with the location where it is now. Um, actually, I have a question. As far as your uh, the Kitty Cat website, did you track? Um, <laughs> Did you use uh, any kind of analytics or anything to, to determine if people were visiting it? Um, actually, I did not. Um, maybe I should have now looking back and now that you mentioned that. Um, I think just the fact that it was, you know, my piece had QR codes. Um, so the fact that people saw that, they were like, hmm, you know. Um, so I, I didn't think about it. I just wanted people to, to just do it. But... I guess I tried to make it inviting, the QR code itself with uh, emblems that match the poster above it. But um, I guess we'll see. I'm going to work out some other situations. But I'll definitely 100% keep analytics in mind for that. Yeah, it's not too late, at least in terms of the tail end. But I think that is one of the challenges, especially now. I think interactive uh, exit exhibitions is so much more, it seems like it's more and more popular to have an interactive mm -hmm. element. Um, and I think it's just an interesting challenge to try to figure out um, how to get people to respond to your work in the way that you want them to. Um, whether it's clicking on uh, something or viewing a QR code and using that or taking something away or whatever it is. Um, so. Yeah, I think this is kind of a good time to maybe talk about um, our relationship with Behance and like your ability to, for this exhibit to to live beyond May 19th or beyond graduation. Um, and so I think everybody knows that we have this this partnership with um, Behance portfolios. Um, and I mean the students are really encouraged with their work online. It's free. It has a pretty streamlined template. Um, and then there's also a Corcoran page that's related to it. Um, and so. You know, just talking about what the impact of, of the digital world and digital technology and this wider world of online portfolios is on your work and kind of the future of your of your art careers. Well, um, I think it's great because um, as we saw next, um, it's still up until May 19th, but even after the opening, um, the conversation about next is still going on, whether it's within our own community here at the Corcoran or outside of it or on social media or on blogs or wherever and it, it gets to live on you know through through a non-tangible format like you know the internet and I think Behance you know in conjunction with Next is going to be a really great marketing tool for Next for the Corcoran and for the individual artists as well. Um, I think I like the fact that not only I can put my own portfolio or projects on Behance, also I can explore what my classmates have there and to read a little, to have more information about their individual pieces or their what they're doing or what they have done. Yeah, their um, whatever they put there. Sometimes the, that information I couldn't get from you know just looking at their piece and. It's really great for me to know more what they wrote about their own uh, work. I think for our program, um, looking at new platforms to show off our, meet, our our projects is a big part of it. And um, Behance is really helpful and another avenue to drive people towards our project different websites and kind of explore our projects more. Um, so I really appreciated Behance a lot. Um, I've been using Behance actually for a while now. Um, Francesca Guerrero, she's the chair of the graphic design department. She's been a real strong advocate of it from the beginning, and uh, it's it helped me get internships. It's a really useful tool. Um, 
so uh, I definitely I definitely think that as a you know someone looking for a job and, and as a design professional it's just it's a great way to promote yourself and to see what other work is out there exactly and um, both the, the event of next and the duration of it of its installation in the galleries and then this um, continuation through the Behance framework um, provides a lot of opportunity for follow-up. We were talking about the different like specific critiques, you know, where we're assigning or receiving evaluations um, for the work that we've done. But I think both of those forums, the Next and Behance, um, they're about extending that critique and extending the conversation. And I think it is a good um, practice, a good reminder of, of what it is we're trying to create here individually. And it's not so much about the thing or the piece or the item, but a, a contribution to the discipline, a contribution to the art, a contribution to um, uh, pushing some tangent of a conversation further. And Behance does that, um, continues that sort of automatically for us once, the, once all the pieces come down from the wall. From a, um, I'm just going to add from a practical kind of design, graphic design perspective for a design lab, it's been really great to have this Behance network because it's an automatic database of imagery and information that we can utilize for, you know, next year even more than this year because it just launched this year, but we can utilize that information to inform our graphic design solutions for the show, but then also in terms of content for populating the microsite, for example, it just made things a whole a lot more um, organized and, and, and streamlined. So that also is a plus. And, and that digital record is so important um, f for those of you who are graduating, but also the underclassmen and the, the students that are rising. Um, it helps the, helps the re uh, research, helps precedent. Con uh, I have, especially at the beginning of the year, I have a lot of these students asking sort of exemplary projects and, and very often we're thinking back to you know phenomenal work, phenomenal drawings, pho phenomenal models um, completed in the past and you know the, the hands really sort of streamlines that archive to make it really accessible so I think especially you know for um, all of you pioneers um, you're sort of laying that first volume of work um, that's going to be continued to um, be part of the conversation in studios um, in a way that didn't exist before, at least not at the Corcoran. Yeah, and we really, you know, we're encouraging faculty and also staff to get involved on Behance as well. Um, and I think that's really great for students to see what their instructors are up to as well. Um, okay, do we, have, do we have Joe for real this time? <laughs> for real. Hi, Joe. Can you hear us? Hi, Jill. <laughs> okay, cool. Can you actually hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes. Now, okay, cool. Well, I'm okay. totally outside of the conversation now, though, so I have no idea what to what to say or what, how to how to join. Okay, so <clears throat> so really quick, I just I, it would be great if you could introduce yourself. I think everyone knows who you are at this point, but um, what, your, what your role has been in Next 2013. Um, okay, well, I'm Joseph Hale, Director of College Exhibitions. Um, this is our third year doing uh, Next, and um, I guess everyone sort of has talked at length about what Next is, um, but our role is basically to uh, manage the project because it's both a college and a museum of sort of integration uh, moment to sort of um, on the on the college side make sure everybody's organized with content and on the museum side um, making sure everybody knows what their roles are what to expect and sort of just having the whole thing um, come together as as one mega mega show I always think of it as kind of like a like a uh, a funnel all of these different uh, student uh, content coming in and coming back to that point of the museum and meeting the public officially. So, did that make any sense? Yeah, I, I think I think so. Um, I think what what we've been kind of we've definitive been talking, yes, Joe. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, I don't okay. think so. I think it was perfect. <laughs> 
Well, we've been talking about the student experience, the critiques, um, as well as Behance, and it would be great if you could um, give us some insight on, on the planning of the show. And I know you work with some exhibition design fellows um, in the arrangement and the planning and actually physically getting the show up on the walls and successful. Yeah, well, that's like probably the most complicated thing is that what we're trying to do with Next is to sort of really, really compress the time that, that um, sort of an artist creative process gets turned into a museum level exhibition. And it's, it's with many people at once. Um, and they're all, uh, not only are they all contemporary living artists, which is what the museum isn't necessarily used to dealing with, but they're also, um, you know, in-house and young. So it's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people trying to make sure that, uh, you know, that they can change their project up to the last moment, and we were trying to compensate for that. Uh, and the only way that we had to really do that was to use the um, exhibition design students, because the Corcoran also has um, an exhibition interior design programs that are um, that do a lot of the same things that, that we're trying to do when we organize the show in terms of uh, layout and sort of trying to figure out how things would be, sort of the map of where everyone's going to be located and, and for what reason. Um, so I, we tried to do as much delegating as we could to also roll in um, the design fellows who are working for our department in, in, um, in having a hands-on part of actually planning the show. And I think it showed. This was the first year we did it, and we had 50% more students in, in, um, in, at least in the undergrad portion of the show. And, um, and it helped a lot. I think it shows. I think there was a lot of enthusiasm too. Those, the, I wasn't directly involved with the fellows, um, but I checked in with them periodically, and they were definitely you were definitely getting your money's worth out of them. Um, they were working hard, um, but uh, they started to take a lot of. Um, uh, they started to have a lot of pride in in, in anticipating how this how the show was actually going to flesh out. They were really excited when they started finalizing the arrangement. They were really looking forward to their favorite projects that had been called out, um, and I think that created a really great buzz. Um, you know, Corcoran's got a Georgetown campus and a downtown campus, and um, I think their participation and their excitement about it um, really helped keep Next um, uh, really on the radar over here at the other location. I mean, I also think that it, it took great advantage of the fact that it is a small community of Corcoran students. And, and my fantasy, which I did think start to really happen, was that you'd see exhibition design students forming sort of, that who are graduate students, maybe more typically at Georgetown, forming relationships with the undergrads and thinking them, of them as sort of clients for making this whole thing happen. And so you, so you know, in, and, it, and again, it's 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 all very experimental. So it maybe didn't happen as thoroughly as as it could have, but um, in the best cases, it was happening that you know we had exhibition design students going through and touring studios and figuring out exactly um, you know who who should be where and talk and really trying to talk to people about the kinds of projects they were going to have because we knew that um, that even, you know if. We could tell these students, you know, oh, give us a floor plan for exactly how you're going to do it, and that's maybe not what they would be ready to present at the last moment. So we needed to have somebody who had kind of a feel for what uh, what people would do. How long? How long would you say, like, start to finish? Um, you know, how long do you think this process took for you and your students? Specifically, me, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, I mean, we start planning in. I mean, logistically, we start planning with the museum over a year out. You know, getting some like, when's the opening going to be? When when are when's it going to? When are we going to have a chance to get into the uh, museum and start installing? When do we have to close out by? Um, so that's like a year and a half, almost two years out. And then, um, and then actually planning with students, getting them uh, sort of communicated to what is the project, what um, what is expected of them, happens in early in the fall. Pretty much, you know, corresponding to when Maria is doing design lab, um, what the, the way it was carried out this year, uh, design labs initial initial uh, project proposals, um, and then once we're in there, you know, it's 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 been we've been able to get things done faster and faster. Um, 
but you know it's a, it's another couple of weeks of installing and, and then well, so, for the first round and it's continuous. So for for this for oh that's fine for for the for the students how much of how much of this process is like really thinking about exhibiting in the gallery um, when you're deciding what what your piece is and the scale um, you know how much of how much of the fact that you're going to be in this show this next show it weighs on what you're producing. Um, well, for me, there was uh, definitely the hardest part for me was really coming to a decision with all my ideas. I remember going to Joe saying, I'm going to do this next week. I'm going to do this. No, no, I'm going to do that. And uh, Sorry, Joe. But, uh, you know, it's just like the decision making process and seeing what works best for you, but also for, the, I guess, the space you're given and it, it it opens up your mind to, you know, I guess, and I just from watching Joe and the college exhibitions team, um, it opens your eyes to, I guess, what goes on in putting together an exhibit like this. Um, it's a, a lot of planning and a lot of hard work, but I would say it never, the fact that it was next and it was going to be, you know, pretty much so far the biggest show of my life like it wasn't going to be that wasn't going to affect what the work was going to be it's just going to affect which work was going to be put out because I, I knew that you know going in and presenting it next I had to do something that I would be proud of but just not knowing which which or what to put up was the biggest issue So we have about about eight minutes left, um, and I think it would be it would be interesting to go through and ask that question that I guess we always ask, like for the for the students. I mean, what's what's next for you all after after May nineteenth? You know, what is what's your plan? Um, I'm looking to to work in the graphic design arena in some way. Um, I'm keeping my options open. I'm looking at a lot of different um, focuses. And I think that's one of the nice things about the education I received at the Corcoran is it was very multidisciplinary. Um, they kind of made sure that we had a pretty broad uh, array of subjects that we focused on web design, um, you know, print design, animation, all kinds of different things. Um, so um, I'm interested in the nonprofit sector specifically. I, I and it may call me crazy, but I want to change the world. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll go. Um, I'm currently in the process of figuring out what job to get after uh, graduation. Um, but after having our presentations at during for the next and for a thesis, um, I was approached about turning my thesis into a full-length documentary. So <clears throat> currently um, talking with some mentors about how to actually do that and move past uh, a college program and into the real world and how to make that transition. Cool. Congratulations. That's really great. Thanks. Don Don? Um, I have been doing painting and pottery, but I had always been taking graphic design classes to in Georgetown. So um, I'm going to stick around a little bit. I'm from China, but I don't need to leave immediately after graduation. I have uh, up to one year to stay here. So I'm looking for a graphic design job too. Yeah. And last but not least, Mazine, do you have any um, plans? Yeah, well, my in the grand scheme of it all, I would love to have my own gallery. So up until then, um, I guess just work, you know, to support myself and uh, follow the dream somehow at some point, hopefully not too far from now. Well, and it's cool. I can all add, the students. add sorry, um, sorry. for the interest on exhibition as well.
Are you still there? I'm here. Okay. You want to add? I was going to add to the <laughs> in, interior design and exhibition design. The thesis reviews um, are composed of jurors, um, mainly from the outside. And um, interior design this year has had a series of critics um, from academics and theorists to um, practitioners. Uh, we have interior designers um, of all types and scales, residential, commercial, hospitality, etc. We've got architects, we've interior architects, we've um, furniture designers, uh, we have a, uh, an artist. Um, so a really broad, broad crew will join us at the end. Um, and uh, Nicole, you probably remember from your own experience, but the, very often those are sort of re recruiting moments. Um, so the best time to ask what are you doing next is like uh, a few hours after you've presented your thesis. Sometimes you have a little bit more of an inspiration, just like, just like Whitney. Um, and that's actually, one of, as a faculty member, that's a really exciting moment. Um, when a student hears from somebody other than me <laughs> what potential they have um, and, and what sort of thing, like Mazine was saying, the, the impossible, or not the impossible, but the dream could become a really uh, accessible possibility. So ask again in like a week. Okay, yeah, I always, I always forget that we are kind of in the, in the, the midst of the grad presentations, and so... Um, exhibition design, interior design, they're all coming up, but I just want to congratulate all of you for all of your great work, um, and Maria and Joe for putting up next and getting us through another really successful year, um, and congratulations to all the students, and graduation is so very close, I'm sure everyone can, can taste it. <laughs> Yay! Can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> All right. I'm excited for what's next. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you.